before you run the new one out uh, simulation, so it should be finished. And now we can um, compute some, uh, evaluate the goodness of our interpolation of the metro station. So we open the notebook number five. The first cell are always the same. Now we read uh, the observed rainfall uh, file that is uh, in data Cavone, and the file is uh, the precipitation CSV file. I create a data, a data frame in the OPS that contains the measured uh, rainfall rate. And uh, if uh, uh, we see in the, in the head of this uh, data frame, we see that the first date is uh, 2012. Uh, first January. So I define a start date and date. So when we compare the interpolated data with the measured data, we can compare the same uh, data, data interval. <coughs> so the start date is uh, uh, 2013, 12, 15, 00. And the end date is uh, 2015, 12, 15. And now I create a what I call OPS underscore mask. It is a new data frame that is uh, taken from uh, the original one just for the interval that I selected. Now I read the interpolated, uh, interpolated rainfall. So I go in the folder output uh, cover recreating. And the file uh, is uh, L double O total linear precip. And I read this file uh, in a variable name interp. And now I can create a new data frame that uh, contains for each station the root mean square error between computed uh, using the interpolated data and the measured data. So here, I the, using the command data frame of Panda libraries, I define a column, which is the header is RMS key, and uh, the values are computed using the root mean square error formula. And now I can plot this data frame. So for each station, I can see which is the root mean square error for each station. I can do this also for just, instead of working with all the, 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 the station, I can just work with, a, choose one station, for example, station number 20. I repeat all the, the cells that I, have done before. So in this case, I created just a data frame with a, with a column with the data daytime, and another column with, a, uh, for example, the measured data, the interpolated data. And here, uh, I can visualize uh, which is the difference between the observer and the interpolated data. You see that from the interpolation data, there are some values that are negative. And then uh, when uh, we uh, prepare the data for the runoff uh, model, we have to set this data to zero. But this is something that we do later with uh, the interpolated data on the central. Uh, another index uh, to evaluate the goodness of interpolation is uh, the absolute error. So as before, I create a new data frame which uh, uh, I populated this data frame with uh, the difference between the observed uh, value and the interpolated data. And I take the absolute value of this difference. And this is uh, this done just for station number 20. So for each day time, I can see which is the difference between the interpolated and the observed value. And finally, I can also compute the root mean square error just for this uh, for station number 
Now, I, the bridging interpolation uh, on the central is finished on your laptop or is working? This is the simple <coughs> number six. So with the notebook number six, uh, we can do almost the same thing that we have seen uh, up to now for the with the file of the interpolation data on the on the centroids. So I import all the libraries, I set the parameters uh, of the plots. Now I read the data. In this case, uh, the data is uh, in the output carbonic region. And the file name is uh, interpolated total TV linear spreadsheet. And now I can plot the data. And this is the plot of the rainfall rate for all the station for all the period. If I select just the, from this data frame, I select the ID one. I can see the time series for the subbase in number one. And to see if the interpolation is uh, reasonable in the centroids, I can compute, for example, the cumulative rainfall for the database. I compare this value with the Cumulate the rainfall in, uh, in the station we have. So I move in the folder data carbone. Here I take uh, read the file precipitation. Again, uh, keep in mind that uh, this file is uh, bigger than our interpolation time window. So I select, uh, uh, I set a start date and date. I create a new data frame that starts uh, with uh, on uh, uh, December 15 of uh, 2013 and ends uh, in uh, 2015. I compute the total measured rainfall and here I plot uh, the new data frame. So this is the same plot we, s we have seen in the first uh, notebook and the first notebook number zero. And below, you can have the plot uh, of the cumulative rainfall in your subbasins. And from this uh, rainfall rate to cumulative uh, values, you can understand if uh, your interpolation can be reasonable or not. I mean, if in one subbasin you have, uh, I don't know, 600 millimeters, uh, probably something was not good. Some parameters is not good because it's the value is too different from what to be measured in the train transmission. And uh, to run, as Giuseppe uh, said before, uh, you can run this the uh, also with a graph. The advantage of working with a graph is that uh, for each uh, folder of your subbasin that you have in the folder data, Gabone, So here you have uh, folder number one that is uh, relative uh, for subbase number one. You should have uh, a file, a precipitation file, the, the time series for this subbase. So instead of taking a uh, modified copying and paste uh, from the, the file that we have just read, uh, we can use the graph that uh, puts in this folder the the file, the input file for the precipitation. And now we have, uh, from this, pro, uh, this file, we have to modify it uh, since uh, there are some values that are negative. So with the notebook number seven, you can set in the folder data carbone. <coughs> and this uh, function. You uh, can run this script after seven of OMS. 
Uh, you have to run this uh, this notebook after you run the graph in OMS. For number seven in OMS. In no, seven. number seven uh, is uh, for raster interpolation. But you have in OMS you have to run the graph uh, the sim in the simulation. Yeah, in OMS you have to open uh, the folder graph uh, mm -hmm. and run the graph uh, dot sim. Have you already done this with the projector? No. no. Okay. So um, here in the graph we have uh, seven uh, simulation files. Each uh, each one uh, refers to one uh, one some basin of uh, of hours. So and then there is a the graph sim file that has uh, has to be run and this. Uh, takes uh, handles with uh, all the, the other SIM files in the folder. So running the graph, uh, you automatically run uh, each SIM file in the folder, from number one to number seven. And uh, uh, running this graph, uh, you run a uh, uh, SIM file, for example, number one. So when you run the SIM file number one, you run the same almost the same file, the same SIM file that you run uh, with the creaking point flagship. Uh, but the advantage is that the output is uh, the, uh, saved in the right, uh, in the right folder. In, in this case, in data, Cavone, one. And we have just one column with the interpolated data on the centroids of sub number one. And the same for uh, the other SIM file. So now you can run uh, graph. Uh, 